Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Shogun Mohammed. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today, in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, at Skhir Palace, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia's Interior Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Abdul Aziz bin Saud bin Nayef bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. Upon his visit to Bahrain, His Royal Highness Prince Abdul Aziz conveyed the greetings of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, and the Saudi Crown Prince, Deputy Premier and Defense Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, wishing Bahrain further development. His Majesty the King conveyed his greetings to the Saudi monarch and Saudi Crown Prince and his wishes of further development for the Saudi people. His Majesty the King affirmed the depth of the historic fraternal relations between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia based on cooperation and coordination in all fields. His Majesty hailed Saudi Arabia's honoring stance under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques that supports Bahrain and embody the strong historic ties between the two countries, noting that Bahraini-Saudi relations are based on the principles of brotherhood, codependence and solidarity. His Majesty the King welcomed the Saudi Interior Minister, affirming that this visit contributes in the consolidation of cooperation and coordination in the security field and to consult on current developments, especially during the region's current circumstances. He also expressed appreciation to Saudi Arabia's pioneering role in reinforcing joint Gulf action and defending its interests. The meeting also discussed regional and international developments and issues of mutual interest. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Skhir Palace the Ambassador of the French Republic to Bahrain, Tissi Longuet, who delivered to His Majesty a written letter from the President of France, Emmanuel Macron, in which he invited His Majesty to conduct an official visit to France. The letter, the letter reiterated France's support to Bahrain's efforts in combating terrorism and its financing and highlighted the deep-rooted bilateral relations and joint cooperation, as well as the latest regional and international updates delivered to the letter by His Majesty during her reception at Skhir Palace. His Majesty expressed thanks and appreciation to the French President on the invitation, praising the advanced level of coordination at all levels to serve common interests. His Majesty also expressed thanks to President Macron for his keenness on bolstering relations with Bahrain, noting the effective role of France in maintaining regional and global security and stability. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and for his Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa at Qutaybiyya Palace today. During the meeting, the Royal Highnesses reviewed the initiatives that aim at reinforcing and benefiting from Bahraini openness at the development and economic levels. They stress that the government will continue taking steps aiming to ensure the optimum use of the kingdom's openness in order to make it an element that supports Bahrain's investment and advantages and strengthens its international indicators as a destination for expertise. The Royal Highness has noted Bahrain's encouraging investment opportunities, which has accelerated the pace of investments, especially in the banking and financial sector. They express satisfaction with the increasing number of investments in the banking sectors and the desire of international banks to open branches in Bahrain or start their operations from it, which proves that the economic situation in the kingdom is developed and stimulating.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa chaired today the weekly cabinet session. In the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness briefed the Council on the results of the talks His Royal Highness held with the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Sabah, during his recent visit to Kuwait. His Royal Highness hailed the historic, deep-rooted relations between the two countries, noting the importance of the visit to support bilateral cooperation and bolster the Gulf Cooperation Council's march. The Cabinet commended the role of the National Guard and their high level and readiness to perform their duties. The Cabinet then discussed the government's support provided to families and citizens, which in 2017 amounted to a total of 382.5 million dinars for low- and middle-income families to improve their living standards through various programs, including Social Security, Housing Allowance and the High Prices Allowance. His Royal Highness directed to study the intensification of support programs provided to low- and middle-income earners and to ensure they benefit from all aspects of social support. His Royal Highness was briefed on the services and housing needs that have been met for St. Abbas residents. His Royal Highness directed the Ministry of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning to meet the needs of El Malchi residents and to verify their complaints, especially those related to the sewage network. His Royal Highness also instructed the Ministry of Health to fill shortages in medicine provided to citizens in medical centers. He also directed to increase diagnostic devices in government hospitals. The Cabinet approved a draft law concerning Bahrain Polytechnic upon receiving a recommendation from the Coordination Committee, chaired by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad al-Khalifa. The draft law grants Bahrain Polytechnic the authority to manage the college's work in order to achieve the objectives for which it was established to ensure the sustainability of its services. The draft law will attract academic competencies and enhance the quality of education as well as transfer the surplus of Bahrain Polytechnic's budget to become financially self-sufficient. The cabinet decided to refer the draft law to the legislative authority. Upon the directives of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, the Minister of Health presented a report on the preventive and precautionary measures taken as well as the measures applied to reduce the causes of infection in hospitals and control the infection associated with health facilities in the public and private health sectors, which contributed to reducing the incidence of resistant Staphylococcus aureus to rates close to the recommended global rates and also to similar rates in developed countries. The Prime Minister expressed thanks and appreciation to the authorities concerned at the Ministry of Health and the National Health Regulatory Authority for the measures taken to counter the spread of infection and maintain the safety of patients at health institutions. The Cabinet discussed amending the traffic law to permit more cases of reconciliation, including running red lights, the removal or tampering with the registration plates of vehicles and exceeding the speed limits. This aims to relieve pressures on courts and the prosecution concerning traffic causes to be settled in the General Directorate of Traffic instead. The Cabinet decided to refer to the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs a draft law to amend some provisions of Law 22 of 2014. The Cabinet approved a proposal to facilitate the process of obtaining certificates of origin. It also approved adding a table on the documents needed for customs clearance to the Table of Customs Services Fees accompanying Resolution No. 80 of 2017. The Cabinet approved to expropriate the Hura housing project in Block 318. The Minister of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning will take the necessary measures. The Cabinet approved and referred to the legislative authorities two draft laws, the first on Bahrain joining the Convention on Mutual Administrative Assistance in Tax Matters as amended by the 2010 Protocol, and the second about the Kingdom joining the Multilateral Com Com Authority Convention on the Automatic Exchange of Financial Account Information, both signed by Bahrain on 29th of June 2017. The Cabinet approved and referred to the Representatives Council a draft law amending the law on leasing real estate, which mandates the specification of the purpose behind leasing the real estate. The Cabinet referred to the Representatives Council four draft laws, two of them concerned with the regulating of the labor market, the third about public roads, and the fourth on, on the general budgets. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Tsghir Palace the Saudi Interior Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Abdulaziz bin Saud bin Naif Al Saud, where they discussed the brotherly bilateral relations and means of strengthening cooperation at all levels, as well as the latest regional updates. His Royal Highness underscored the development of deep rooted Bahraini Saudi relations, adding that the security of Bahrain and Saudi Arabia is that of each other. 
he expressed appreciation of the efforts of Saudi Arabia under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, in maintaining security and stability in the Arab and Islamic world. The Saudi Interior Minister conveyed to His Royal Highness the greetings of appreciation of the custodian of the two holy mosques and the Saudi Crown Prince, Deputy Premier and Defence Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, and their wishes of further progress and prosperity to the leadership and the people of Bahrain. His Royal Highness welcomed the Saudi Interior Minister's visit, which embodies the brotherly bilateral relations and common destiny. He added that these relations were established by the forefathers, stressing the unity between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia. He also noted the role of Saudi Arabia in the Gulf and regional security system, hailing its political and economic weight. For his part, the Saudi Interior Minister expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Premier for his efforts in bolstering bilateral relations.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Ghibliya Palace, Thailand Embassy Sharjah Affairs, Hatay Chanuk. During the meeting, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister noted the course of cooperation between the two countries in various fields, expressing his pleasure in the development of the Bahraini-Thai relations, which embodies the strong ties between the two countries and their people, based on understanding and cooperation to serve joint interests. His Royal Highness noted Bahrain's keenness to bolster partnership with the Kingdom of Thailand, based on the mutual relations of respect. For her part, the Thai Embassy Chargé d'Affaires expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his efforts to strengthen bilateral ties, affirming her country's keenness to develop relations with Bahrain and bilateral cooperation in various fields. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and for his Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad al-Khalifa, today met with the President of India's National Congress Party, Rahul Gandhi, at Qadaybiya Palace. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Muhammad al-Khalifa, attended the meeting. During the meeting, the Crown Prince and the President of India's National Congress Party discussed bilateral ties, highlighting the importance of continuing to build on solid foundations to advance collaboration across various areas and sectors. His Royal Highness and the guests discussed areas of shared interest, in particular the importance of strengthening long-term development and fiscal security across the region. They also highlighted Bahrain's innovative labor market, which enables the Indian community in the kingdom to continue making positive contributions to Bahrain's long-term development. The Crown Prince and the National Congress Party President discussed opportunities to advance bilateral co co collaboration while recognizing the importance of increasing productivity and employment opportunities for youth. For his part, the President of India's National Congress Party expressed his gratitude for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness and highlighted the strong and historic relations between India and Bahrain. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council of Youth and Sports, Honorary President of Bahrain Mixed Martial Arts Federation and founder of Khalid bin Hamad al-Khalifa Mixed Martial Arts Organization, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad al-Khalifa, received at Al-Wadi Palace today, India's National Congress Party delegation. The delegation was headed by Rahul Gandhi, accompanied by Dr. Sam Petroda, Dr. Fergus Korean, Milin Diora and Madhu Yaski. His Highness Sheikh Khalid hailed the Bahraini-Indian relations and joint coordination, which resulted in implementing several projects to develop various sectors. He noted the keenness of the two countries' leaderships to develop bilateral relations to achieve development and reinforce peace and security. Sheikh Khalid highlighted the role of the Indian community and its active participation in the sustainable development process, highlighting the Bahraini community's respect for it. His Highness reviewed with the Indian delegation the achievements of the Kingdom in various sports events, including equestrian and endurance races, Ironman and MMA. He also affirmed the support of the leadership to sports, adding that the Kingdom aims to promote cricket through its organization of a cricket league. For his part, Rahul Gandhi lauded the measures taken by Bahrain to promote sports, valuing the role of His Highness Sheikh Khalid in supporting various sports, especially MMA. He affirmed that India welcomes the measures taken by Bahrain to reinforce the bilateral relations. His Highness Sheikh Khalid received a commemorative gift from the President of the Indian National Congress. The Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Sabah, inaugurated today the 11th periodic meeting of the chairpersons and speakers of the Shura and Representatives Councils and National Assemblies of the Gulf Cooperation Council held in Kuwait. From the Bahraini side, the meeting was headed by the Council of Representatives Speaker and Head of Bahrain's Parliamentary Division Delegation, Ahmed bin Ibrahim Al Mullah. Al Mullah praised the efforts and keenness of the Emir of Kuwait in strengthening the cohesion, integration, and future of GCC countries with their leaders. Al Mullah conveyed the greetings of His Majesty the King and his appreciation of the efforts to strengthen GCC unity and his wishes of success for the meeting, as well as his support of Gulf Legislative Councils. 
For more information about the meeting of chairpersons and speakers of the Shura and Representatives Councils and National Assemblies of the GCC, we have with us the Member of Parliament and Parliamentary Division Delegation, Ahmed Al Haddad. Hello, Mr. Ahmed Al Haddad. Can you tell us more about the aim of this meeting? Yes, hello, and uh, good evening to your viewers. And to well, you. Uh, as, as you said, uh, the docket of this, uh, you know, piece of news that uh, His Highness the Emir of Kuwait has uh, op uh, during this uh, ceremony, opening ceremony of this session, uh, spoke on the very important issue of GCC unity, GCC welfare of the citizens, and uh, he has very strong belief that whatever the Gulf countries are facing now. It's a temporary, it is transitional, and at the end, the GCC countries and the citizens of these countries will overcome all the obstacles. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, also, uh, the chairman of the House of Representatives of Bahrain, uh, His uh, Excellency Ahmed Mullah, spoke also uh, during the opening ceremony of this session. And as you know, Bahrain uh, was the president of 10th session uh, during uh, 2016, and Kuwait is now t taking, taking it over, and this is, will be for one year. And uh, during his speech, Mr. Amullah outlined and summarized the importance of GCC uh, uh, unity as well, and uh, explained the role of Bahrain during that period of one year and its contribution in enhancing and strengthening the GTC countries vis-a-vis -vis the parliament's issues on different levels being economic, political, social, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, there are so many issues, very important issue on the agenda of this uh, session. One of the main issues which was Kuwait uh, was mandated to take, uh, to take care of it and have uh, a deep study, and that is the employment in the GC can, GCC countries and mm -hmm. what action, what uh, steps can be taken, what policies can be followed mm -hmm. so as to uh, minimize the effect of this uh, very important issue. Yes. And as you know, Saudi Arabia is taking the lead by what is called Saudization of jobs, mm -hmm. and also some other countries also, they are following suit. So this is a very important issue for the Gulf country. And, and uh, Mr. Al Haddad, how can such meetings contribute to enhancing joint parliamentarian work? Uh, beyond any doubt, you know, when, mm -hmm. when you have a physical contact, when you have personal contact uh, with so many different delegations, and when you participate at such regional uh, meetings, that enhance and strengthen the positions of all parliamentarians who participate in such meetings. And by such uh, participation, you gain a lot of expertise, a lot of experience, mm. and you build good relations with those who take very keen interest in development, legislatures, and laws in their respective countries. There is also, if you will allow me to say one thing, they also mention or discuss the terrorism. And you know, as you know, terrorism is an international phenomenon in the Gulf countries, in Bahrain, and all over the world. And they will coordinate their action to see what is the best policy to counter and fight this uh, issue. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are other issues also, which are very important to Gulf countries, which were on the agenda of this session. One is uh, to strengthen the, our relation with the U EU countries. You know, you, you, GCC countries has very important economic, political, social, scientific relation with EU. And the Gulf countries have taken their steps here to form a joint delegation to visit these countries and to see with them what is the best policy for both GCC countries and EU countries so mm -hmm. as to enhance and strengthen our relation, our existing relation, for the benefits of all the citizens. Mm 
That's... And also, there is also one important issue here. Also, our relation with the United States. Mm -hmm, of course. Is, we, we have been trying hard to uh, have a joint delegation from the CCC countries that can visit the Congress and discuss with them the, the relation between those countries and the United States. And Kuwait has been tasked also to follow this issue. And we hope that there will be a response soon from the United States side. Of Hopefully. course, also the, the Latin American countries are very important. Uh, this issue has been picked up as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Gulf countries will study this issue and try also to strengthen and improve and develop this is uh, country relation with Latin America. Hopefully. As well. Thank you so much, Mr. Haddad. The Interior Minister, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, received the Saudi Interior Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Abdul Aziz bin Saud bin Naif Al Saud, on his arrival to Bahrain. The Saudi Interior Minister is leading a high profile security delegation during the three day official visit. He was also received by the ambassadors of both countries and senior interior ministry officials. The visit is part of the excellent Bahraini Saudi brotherly ties, which have become stronger in the era of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa and his brother, the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz al Saud, thanks to their resolve to work in the best interests of their citizens and their security and stability. The National Oil and Gas Authority announced the amendment of gas prices for Jade and Mumtaz in 2018 based on Gulf and international price reviews. The Jade 91 octane gas will cost 140 fills per litre, which had previously cost 125 fills per litre, and the Mumtaz 95 octane gas will cost 200 fills per litre, which had previously cost 160 fills per litre. The gas support for Jade and Mumtaz in 2017 amounted to around 41 million Bahraini dinars. The level of support in 2018 is expected to reach over 66 million Bahraini dinars. The Minister of Oil stated that the global oil prices have increased gradually since 2016, followed by an increase in global gas derivative prices. The Dirasat Annual Forum was held today, entitled Qatar, Patron of Anarchy and Crisis in the Middle East. More in this report. Dirasat held its annual forum today, aimed to build bridges between different perspectives, create a stage for open debates, and use strategic insights to enhance understanding and promote new thinking and independent thoughts. Such a forum is necessary for us uh, here in Bahrain, given the measures taken by Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, the Emirates, and, and Egypt towards uh, Qatar. Uh, it's very important for us to have this platform uh, whereby we have experts and uh, uh, representatives from different countries to showcase Qatar's interventions and their internal affairs, whether it was here in Bahrain and whether it was in uh, other Arab states. We have representatives um, from a number of uh, neighboring countries who have suffered from the Qatari interventions and who would uh, showcase the effects of such interventions in undermining their peace and security. The theme of this year's forum highlights common concerns surrounding Qatar's adoption of systematic policies that threaten the stability and security of the Gulf region. It's quite critical to have it at this time because you need to debate it, you need to discuss it, you need to come to a conclusion about it. And more importantly, you need to assess your strategy and you need to reach out to the public and to the world through intellectuals speaking of the crisis of Qatar and how could we control it and how could we, and how could we control the behavior of Qatar as a threat to, to security and to peace. Qatar's policies are synonymous with certain other regional projects whose purpose appears to be expansion and domination at the expense of the sovereignty and stability of Arab countries. We have uh, discussed the issue of Qatar and the numerous I mean, interfering um, acts of Qatar in Bahrain and in internal affairs uh, through a number of um, actually behaviors. On top of that was the continuous Qatari allegations um, that they own um, Bahraini lands and this dates back actually to more than decades ago. Qatar has also continued uh, its interference in the internal affairs of Bahrain through uh, providing support, financial and aiding to terrorist groups 
that are connected to, to the uh, theocracy of Iran, um, targeting policemen and civilians in Bahrain, trying to destroy the infrastructure of Bahrain um, for political and hegemonic, hegemonic uh, purposes. If you ask me, as far as they are concerned, they want to become the capital of the Gulf. No, they can't. They don't have human resources, they don't have expertise, they want to compete Dubai, they want to compete Bahrain, but they can't do it. So the best thing for us to do is, if we cannot compete them, we will create problems for them. So this is actually the reason that we are facing such things. The forum acts as a platform for dialogue and exchange of ideas on common concerns that contribute to addressing current challenges and enhance the pursuit of shared values and aspirations. This is Shogun Mohammed reporting for Bahrain International.